Hey guys, welcome to another how-to video with Matt. Today I'm going to show you how to make a raised dog feeder. But first, you're going to need a few things. To get started guys, you're going to need some 2x2 two two lumber, a tape measure, a pen or pencil, a speed square, a miter saw, you may or may not need a jigsaw for this, a sander, some 2 inch screws, a number 10 countersink bit, a impact driver, wood clamps, dog bowl, and you'll also need your choice of paint or stain. And today's cut sheet guys is super easy, you're going to need to cut out 4 boards at 14 and 3 quarter, 4 at 20 12 and an eighth and four at seven inches. All right guys, so now that you have all of your boards cut out, we need to go around and mark all of our pilot holes so that when we sand it down, we don't have any marks left on our pieces, right? So you need to go ahead and mark you two in the front, just like this. And then right here in your corners, you're gonna have your columns, right? Just like that right there. So you're gonna wanna put you some marks on the bottom side, but you also wanna make sure that you don't crisscross your screws whenever you go to drill them. So make sure you offset your holes a little bit, guys. So go ahead and do that on the back side also. As you can see how we did it right here. And then we offset it on one side. That way our screws don't crisscross each other and cause any problems putting it together. So go ahead and do that for both top and bottom pieces. And then we'll be ready to take it to the sander. Alright guys, so we are back. We have sanded our boards down nice and smooth. Even rounded off all the rough sides and edges right here. Alright, so what we're going to do now guys is we're going to put these together. We're going to put our frames together and our pillars first. I'm going to start with the top. And you want to make sure that you get your pieces lined up the way you want them to go, right? Just the way we drilled our pilot holes, guys. So make sure that you put your pieces in the right spots. And once you get that right there, we're going to go ahead and shoot a screw in right here. And you may or may not need to use wood clamps. I don't think we need wood clamps for this project, but it's not out of the question. You can definitely use them. But I think just holding it tight right here will be good enough just to get it started. So I'm going to go ahead and drill this in right there real fast, guys. Then we'll take our other side piece. Get it lined up nice and flush. And we'll go ahead and shoot ourselves a screw into that. All right, and you always want to make sure all your ends are nice and flush. All right, so now that that is in, just like that, we can now put our back piece on right here, guys. So you want to line it up, make sure you get it the way it needs to go, just like that. And always just press it up against the back of something just like that. So like right here in this left corner, I can go ahead and shoot a screw in it. I line it up and cinch that screw down nice and tight into there, guys. All right, so once that's in, now we can go ahead and get our other part of our frame. Go ahead and get that corner nice and lined up and shoot a screw into that also. Alright, so there we go. There is the top of our frame built right there, guys. And as you can see, I carved out this little lip right here. And what that's going to do is it's going to give it a way for you to pull the bowl out easier, guys. Instead of trying to lift around the middle right here and all that, you can just put your fingers right there and lift the bowl right up. And I smoothed that down with the sander also. Cut that out with the jigsaw and then just smooth it down real nice. So you want to go and repeat that with your other boards, guys. Go ahead and build your bottom part now. Alright guys, so here is our bottom pieces. I went ahead and lined them up. And we're just going to go ahead and shoot some screws in there real quick. Simple and easy. No need for the clamps right there. But the clamps will come in handy down later in the road. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and put a screw in this corner right here. Make sure you cinch them down nice and tight. That's why we drilled out the countersink hole so we don't split our boards, but so that we can get the screws cinched down there nice. So now I just want to go ahead and get this lined up best I could. And this work, this wood isn't perfectly straight, guys. This is all scrap lumber that I find around on job sites and in dumpsters and stuff. And just can't stand to see it go to waste right there. So we are going to go ahead and get a screw in the last corner right here. And 
just being a little careful right there because there's a knot end right there and I don't want to blow out the board. Alright, so there goes the bottom portion right here, guys. So now what I want to do is worry about getting my pillars on nice and tight. So what I like to do, guys, is I like to just turn it over where my pallet holes are right here in each four corners. And what I like to do is go ahead and just kind of pre-drill the screw down as far as it can go without penetrating through the other side. So just want to give it just so that it's a little bit there. That way it just helps when you go to screw it in. That way you're not going all over the place with it. So like I said, I just want to shoot a screw in all four corners right here. Then what I want to do is take my pillar. I want to turn it over just like that. And I want to make sure that I line it up in the corner. And you want to make sure that you do all four pillars the exact same in all four of your corners. You don't want to have it turned one way and then it versus another way. So right here I am going to use my wood clamp. I told you these would come in handy later down the road. So I'm going to get that lined up nice and flush and go ahead and clamp that down into place. And then what I'm going to do guys is get that nice and level as it can possibly be, which it is right there. And then go ahead and shoot a screw into it just like that. So there's the bottom part. So now I'm just going to do the exact same thing for the other four corners. Alright guys, so now that we have our top piece built, we can go ahead and stick it on top of our four pillars and line it up in the corners right here. And you don't really need to take your clamps just yet. What I like to do is just line one side up right there. And I'll take a screw and go ahead and screw that into place. Make sure it's nice and cinched in there tight, guys. Alright, just like that. So then what I want to do is take another screw and just pick a corner. It doesn't really matter. Just follow along, go ahead and line that side up, and shoot your screw down in there. Let's go ahead and get this screw screwed in. I don't know why the... There we go. Alright, so once that screw is in place, now I want to come over to the corner right here in the front. it up also guys and like I said this wood isn't the straightest or perfect this was some job site dumpster wood that was bound for the dumpster that I saved screw kind of pre put in and then I'll go ahead and cinch it down once I get it lined up all right so now we got one more corner to go line it up get it in place and doing this, you can see why it's very important to make sure you don't crisscross your pallet holes, guys. Alright, so that is now in place right there. So now what I want to do is just text to make sure that the bowl is going to fit in there nice and tight. A little lip that I cut into it with the jigsaw right there, guys. It just makes it easier to lift it in and out. So now this what left to do is to stain it. I'm going to be using this Minwax wood finish. This is Sedona Red number 222. I've never used this before guys so we're going to try it out and see what it looks like. Alright guys so I'm going to go ahead and stain this. I got on my vinyl gloves and laid down a trash bag so I don't make a huge mess for you guys because it is pouring rain outside. So I'm just going to start with a big thick coat of stain real quick just to spread it all around. That way it keeps the drip to a minimum right there guys to go with a heavy coat like that. So I'm just going to use this heavy coat and then let it just bleed into the wood. Just like that. And then I'll pull it back here in a second and spread it out onto some dry wood that will soak it up. Just like that right there guys. So I'm already liking the color. Never used this one before. It gives it that kind of like a red wood type of look to it guys. And it's stain. Stain in my opinion is much better for wood projects than paint. And you can always find a nice color stain that looks good with anything guys. So yeah I'm just going to go ahead and spread this out a little bit. And then we'll be back when it dries.
All right, guys, so I'm going to go ahead and stain this. I got on my vinyl gloves and laid down a trash bag so I don't make a huge mess for you guys because it is pouring rain outside. So I'm just going to start with a big, thick coat of stain real quick just to spread it all around. That way it keeps the drip to a minimum right there, guys, to go with a heavy coat like that. So I'm just going to use this heavy coat and then let it just bleed into the wood. Alright guys, so here is the final product right here. We have our dog bowl inserted into our raised bowl frame right here guys. I love how the stain turned out on this. It looks really good. So there's only one thing really left to do and that's to test it out with my dog Rainy. Alright guys, that is how you make the raised dog feeder bowl stand. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Rainy seems to surely like it. Hope you guys hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and support the channel by smashing that like button. Hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Peace.